Hello, students. Second video for the day. Run a little bit late here. Here's the title. Uh, and I'm going through these essays, trying to focus on specific um, graphs. The last one was on the money market graph, which is, I like to say is the second most common. I think the third most common is the Phillips curve. Um, we're, in this one, we're going to focus on what uh, Clifford calls the least important graph. You can go ahead and write it in your notes. Go ahead and copy this down. That is the loanable funds graph. I have not found this to be the least important graph. It very well likely is likely to be the least important graph this year because what I did is I went back for this lecture and looked at the several past essays. I told you all year that when the end comes, uh, that sounds so final, when we get to the end of the year, then I'm going to go back, look through all these essays and try to figure out what I need to teach you. And what I have found is the loanable funds is usually used in, in concert with the last graph, the Forex. And the Forex is my the kids' most favorite graph. If you can imagine anybody liking anything in economics, even kids who don't like economics tend to get fascinated when I get to foreign exchange. First semester got to see it, second semester did it, uh, did, uh, didn't. Uh, but usually you see the Forex and Loanable Funds used together because Forex will not be on your exam this year. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to separate these, but I got three good examples. So write this down. And uh, what, what I'm going to do here is give you some shifters to write on your paper. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not going to give you a whole big long list, but when I have my students do this, this is DLF. I have them put B for borrowers and put BS, B for borrowers, S for savers. So here's what you, I want you to write down for your uh, shifters. For DLF, Anything that'll make you want to have more or less uh, M1 will cause this line to shift. Remember M1 being cash checking accounts and traveler's checks. And remember my stupid example about, um, you know, um, all right, I'm going to back up here. I'm getting off on the money market. It has been a long day and I'm exhausted. This is the demand for money. Okay. Lo no, I'm sorry. Still thinking of that last video. This is the demand for loanable funds. This is for borrowers. Okay. This is not about people holding money. This is for borrowers. So what's going to shift this line is when people want to borrow more money goes to the right. And when they when it goes to the left, they want to borrow less money. Okay. This is for the savers. So if they're going to save more money, this shifts to the right. And if they're going to save less money, it shifts to the left. And hopefully you're watching what's going on to the interest rate over here. Anyway, write that down for the shifters and let's go on. And I hope I can uh, not mess this up. When I listen to these on um, YouTube, I really wish I had a better voice. I've already been told I have a face made for radio. And I guess I've got a, I don't have a voice for radio. I have a voice, I think, for silent movies, <clears throat> but unfortunately not the face. Let's go on. All right, 2019 question three. Um, so you can, um, Pause the video and write this if you want. This is short and simple. And there were several, so on your paper, just write 3A. There were several parts to this question, but none of them are going to be on the exam this year. They're all 4X questions. So we'll just use the first one to kind of get warmed up here. So I'm going to tell you what to do. So draw, for, write 3A and put a loanable funds graph. Okay. So people, and this is ridiculously easy. They increase their saving for retirement. You just take the um, SLF line and shift it to the right. So do that, and this is either two points or three points. Um, usually it's one point for setting the graph up right and the other point for shifting the line. Sometimes it's three, because when you shift the line, you're actually showing what happens to the interest rate. Now, this year you're not drawing the graphs, but as we have found out, and I'm pretty aggravated about this, you are gonna have to answer questions about which line moves in which way. So this would shift the supply of loan funds line to the right, and that would decrease the interest rate. Okay, moving on. All right. Oh, well, here's what they had in their answer key. All right, let's go on to the next question. 2007, form B number two. And um, you don't have to write these down. I know, and I know I'm not going to post them on um, Canvas like I did last time, but for those of you overachievers, you can write this down. Every bit of notes you take is good. All right, so set your paper up to have two A, B, and C. And on A and B, you're going to draw 
the graph. So you can make them small. And for purposes of this exercise, you don't have to put all the labels on there, but just draw the intersecting lines. And let's go through this and try to make this common sense. A, assume that businesses are granted a tax credit on spending for machinery. Now, I have to explain this. Some of, most of you don't even know what a deduction is yet, but there's, when you do your taxes, there's deductions and there's credits. What deductions do is shield part of your money from taxes. It, and all that does is it reduces your taxes or in, it reduces your taxes by a percentage. Okay. A credit is a dollar for dollar giving your money back. In other words, let's say you could deduct $50,000. You could take a $50,000 deduction on your taxes. That doesn't mean you're saving $50,000. You're getting to shield that much from your overall tax rate. Well, I'm making this more confusing, aren't I? Remember, I'm a former accountant. So let's just say you get this 50,000 deduction. That might only save you $20,000. A credit for a $50,000 purchase, something they want, the government wants you to buy, will save you $50,000. So I don't think they're gonna ask you that this year. Just understand a credit it is way better than a deduction. All right, former tax accountant talking there. Okay, assume that businesses are granted a tax cut, uh, credit on spending for machinery. So remember, if they buy a, it's usually solar power. If they buy a solar power machine or something to save us from global warming, what they do is they say, okay, you spend $50,000 on the machine, we're gonna give you $50,000 off on your taxes. So businesses are desperate to do this. So they generally don't have the money for all this. What, how are they gonna get it? They're gonna borrow it. Notice the keyword borrow. So on this graph, what I want you to do is to take the DLF line and shift it to the right. So these businesses are like, dang, I'm gonna go borrow a whole bunch of money. I'm gonna get in debt and have to make payments, but I'm gonna save a lot of money on this year's taxes. So they're gonna go borrow the money to do it. And when the government gives a tax credit, like for stuff to stop, you know, stop climate change, they have a reason that they're doing that, okay? So what's gonna happen is businesses are gonna borrow a whole bunch of money. And when that happens is the, on the ADSRS graph, that AD is going to go up. On this graph, the demand for loanable funds is going to shift to the right, raising the real interest rate. Now, notice on the second one, here's another tax thing. This is odd, but this is from 2007. They tell people, hey, you know, all that money you're making on interest. Now, most of us don't have that much money savings. We don't make that much. But let's say, you know, you, you have, you know, your parents are getting $5,000 in interest, okay? If they're in a 50% from banks, if they're on a 50% tax bracket, they're having to take five of that 5,000 in interest they get from the banks, they're having to, get, having to give the US government $2,500 in taxes. So here's what the government does. It says, hey, we're gonna lower how much tax you pay on the interest you make. What's that gonna cause savers to do? It's gonna cause them to save more. So that is gonna cause the SLF line to shift to the right. So the first one causes demand to go up and the second demand to increase, demand for loanable funds to increase. This one is gonna cause the supply of loanable funds to increase. The first one is gonna drive up the real interest rate. The second one is going to drive down the real interest rate. Now, to get trickier on the end, give your answer to part B, explain what will happen. And this is just an explanation one, I'm gonna tell you. So think of a PPF, PPC. You've got the axis here and you got either a bowed line or a straight line, right? So here's what happens. Businesses are buying all sorts of new machines, okay? Now, we, we did this way back with guns and butter and capital and consumption. The better machines businesses have, the more they're gonna be able to make. So this country's PPF is gonna shift outward. So I, I imagine this looks ridiculous. Here is the PPF. The entire thing, this curve is going to shift out. So you're going to draw a first one. You're going to draw a second one and draw an arrow. That's what would happen if you're drawing it. Here they're asking you to explain it. And I'll show you what their words are. Uh, let me see. As um, Well, I'm just going to show you what they wrote. I'm trying to keep this video under 15 minutes because I said I was only going to give you two today. But make sure you write this down in your answers. Let's see how the smart people word this. Not the rednecks from North Florida. Okay, so uh, there's the first one, as I said, and oh, 
three points. Sometimes it's a two-pointer. Sometimes it's a three-pointer. Three points for that. And again, you don't have to draw it this year, but you should note that they're showing this line going up and they're showing interest going up. Okay. The second one is going to go show supply. I, I'm tempted to say up, you know, or it looks to me like it's going down, but supply is increasing here. And for some reason, they only give you two um, points for this one. Now, the third one I want you to write down word for word just so you can start to see how they word this. Remember on your study guide, I should have all this down for you. And here's what it says. One point is earned. Oh, it's a two-pointer. Oh, this is this is an explanation. Uh, you didn't have to draw it, but it's an explanation that gave you two points. And here's the key thing I want you to underline, capital stock. I've written it down so that I put that in your study guide. I'll say things like, when interest rates go down, businesses will invest more, becoming more productive, getting better equipment. Another way of saying it, or a better way of saying it, is say capital stock increases. That's econ talk for getting better business equipment. Remember, capital to an accountant is money. Capital to an economist is business machinery. The more we get of that, the better off we're going to be. At least that's the way they look at it. All right. So anyway, our third and final question for the day, you can pause this and write this if you want. It's very similar to the other ones. Okay. All right. So anyway, set this up and leave room for the graph. All right. Assume they're at full employment. That means long and short run equilibrium. This is just like the last one. Notice we're seeing a common theme here. If, if they give you one of these on the exam this year, and you can remember this two weeks from tomorrow, because it's a Wednesday when I'm doing this, and the exam is two weeks from tomorrow, good for you. Assume the economy is currently at full employment. The government reduces the tax rate. This is the same as the second part on the last one. They tell people who are saving, they're saying, hey, you know, you, that's where the household comes from. We're going to reduce your taxes on savings. Remember, the power to tax is the power to destroy. And when the government raises taxes, it's their way of saying, don't do this. When they lower taxes, uh, they're saying, do this. And I know a lot of other people have a different way of looking at this. But that's, that's, that's actually probably a pretty conservative. It is a conservative way of looking at it. It's also a way an accountant would look at it, and I make no apologies for my uh, educational background. So they reduce the tax rate. What will happen to private savings? It will increase. And so the supply line will shift to the right. And I'm not going to insult your intelligence and do this again, but you should do this on your paper. Take the SLF, shift it to the right. Remember to draw arrows to show which what happens to the interest rate. The interest rate is going down, which is probably what the government is trying to do here. Given the real interest rate identified in part B, what will happen to short run effect on aggregate demand? Now this is what's gonna happen is, the way I would say it is as interest goes down, people spend, buy, borrow more money to buy things, but that's not the best way to put it. Here's what you're right. As uh, the real interest rate goes down, interest sensitive expenditures increase driving up aggregate demand. There you go. What's the long run effect on potential real GDP? Hint here for you. Real GDP, that straight line, LRAS, is the same as that line on the PPF. In that last question, the PPF shifted outward. What's going to happen here is the LRAS is going to shift out to the right. About to run out of time here, so I'm going to let you see the answers. Okay. So look at this, okay, and look at the answers. I think I explained it all that way. Uh, remember, you can pause, I'll go back and do this, but you can pause the video. I was going to remind you that this is C plus I plus G plus X minus I M. The I part of this is, is leaping that way. Um, all right, and here's your answer, that last one. I want you to write this down, and there you see capital formation again. And I want to finish up with three of my favorite pictures from the year as I say goodbye to my seniors. This is uh, Jamie Williams. I had her in AP World History and AP Macro. So she's a twofer and uh, she knows the manatee story. And so she appeared on Dress Up Day with a manatee. And uh, I know we look just alike. One of us just is just a little bit taller. Um, 
here's the graph sheet. 